thanks. I'm going to give a talk today about something I've never talked about. Uh, so most of you know my story about getting fired from uh, the Netherlands, not existing, um, uh, and about raising a lot of money. But in doing all the things I do, I've had to learn how to manage my energy because, uh, well, we're going to be talking about that. And I've learned some valuable lessons that I would love to share with you. Um, and I'm writing a book on this. Uh, this is the book, Light Your Fire Without the Burnout, Energy Management for Passionate People. So not for people in regular jobs, not for people who do regular things, but like uh, others were saying already, we are pretty special, we're self-motivated, we're passionate about what we do. And maybe that's also our biggest challenge because there's not a boss who tells you do this uh, and then you feel pressured. Your boss is inside yourself and you set your own deadlines and we create our own stress. And we can do a lot of things, we can do a lot of magic, but we have to be aware of what it does to our bodies and our minds and how we can manage it. So this is what we think we are, what we want to be, you know? <laughs> and, and the people we work with, the people you hire, the people around you are all happy, energetic, healthy, passionate about what we do. We communicate well, we party, we're young and, you know? But in reality, it often looks a little bit more like this. <laughs> and you know, either it's you or it's somebody in your environment, but we all recognize this. And we think if we just work a little bit harder, you know, we will get through our to-do list and then it will be more quiet. Who recognizes that? <laughs> Because it's, you know, we're in a project, there's a deadline, there's a launch or something happening and you think it's just this and after this it will get quiet. But who ever had a quiet moment after one project or launch or deadline? <laughs> it doesn't happen, you know, it, the next thing comes up and, and either you create the deadlines and the projects or it comes from outside. There's something happening that you can't influence and you have to react to. So. We all recognize when we're driving a car and you have to get somewhere, you don't have time to get gas, you know, the light pops on. How much more can you drive? How many kilometers or miles? Who knows? 80 kilometers. 50, 60, 70 kilometers, something like that. So you know you can go on and then suddenly, you know, there's a hard stop. Your car just doesn't drive. But what do we do with our bodies? You know, when the light pops on. We all know the first signs of a flu, a headache, being tired. What do we do? We grab a coffee, sugar, uh, some, some painkiller pills, um, maybe some drugs. <laughs> There's no hard stop for your body because you think I can push a little bit more, a little bit more. And then you think a good night's sleep or whatever, you know. So what do you do to recharge? Because I've lived in the, in the Caribbean for a while and people live really day by day. They don't think about the future. They have a job, they get paid for a week and then they don't show up the next week because they have money to buy a beer and to party, right? They don't have a long-term view. What do they do when they go to a gas station? They have five guilders, you know, it's like less than $5. And they put $5 of gas so, you know, it's it's still here and they can drive again. And then the next day they're faced with the same problem again, they put $5. But basically that's also what we do to our bodies. What do you do to recharge? Just tell me some things you do. Anybody doing yoga? Meditate. Yeah. Meditation? Walk in the park. Walk in the park. Listen to music. Listen to music. Yeah. Good night's sleep, massage maybe. But maybe it looks a little bit like this. <laughs> Let's quickly do a meditation so I can continue. <laughs> <laughs> Who recognizes that? <laughs> I, I do, I do. And um, also, you know, we try to fit those things to relax us into our to-do list, into our busy schedule. So, okay, I have to do this, a deadline, a talk, a sales, uh, relax, uh, deadline. Uh, uh. <laughs> and it works a little bit. But that's, that's what we just saw, you know, you, the light goes off and you're, you know, you're here again. But when do you ever really, really recharge? 
Um, who of you takes holidays, like regular two weeks without a laptop doing nothing? <laughs> <laughs> and the people who do, can you explain how you feel on the first day, you know, after a week, after two weeks? You want to share? I did it um, in January for the first time in a few years, and it was amazing. Highly recommended. <laughs> how did you feel? What, what happened in your mind, your body? Uh, I think I was just, yeah, just really refreshed and energized, and it was so nice just switching off my business. I literally didn't even check a single email for two weeks. And did you have a feeling that at the end, you know, your your tank was full again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really recharging, massively beneficial. Somebody else wants to share an experience of a holiday? Yeah, I was at a meditation retreat for ten days uh, one month ago, and. The first days were really, really tough because your brain is constantly like, oh, I'm, I forgot to give them this task or to check this and this. So it was really tough, but then um, after 10 days, you're yeah, massively recharged and you're like, you have this energy, this clarity to think about this next thing that you want to do. I, had, I also did a Vipassana retreat, but it was only five days. I didn't have time for 10 days. So I, <laughs> it was a shorter version. I didn't stop halfway. But the, oh, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. And the, the guy leading it, like the guru, he explained that, you know, we, we take a shower every day. We wash our clothes. We have our house cleaned. When do we clean our mind? When do we get a chance to really you know, clean our minds. We just go on and on and on. And then when we have a break, we read a book, we listen to a podcast, you know, we, we try to cram things in our mind all the time. We listen to music. And the interesting thing is that the meditation, what they teach you is like not to think or not to follow your thoughts. And after a while, you know, it's like a, a bottle of water with some, some mud in it and you shake it and it's very cloudy. And if you don't touch it for a while, the mud sinks down and it becomes more clear. So this is what, what meditation does, in fact. It, it helps you, to, you know, to, to let things sink down and to have this clear mind, this overview, to see what's happening above the clouds, you know, the clouds of your mind, of the daily things. And I think it's really, really powerful. And thinking of it in a way that you take a shower, or you wash your clothes, you clean your house, find a way also to clear your mind, to give yourself some space and then not half an hour built in, in your schedule, but just some time in your day or week that you don't have any plans and that you can just, um, you know, let things happen and sit down with a book or sleep or do nothing or meditate without time pressure. That really, really helps to keep your mind bright and, and, um, and flexible. And then there's a thing. Um, we can do a lot of things now, you know, we're all young, we're fit, we're healthy, we're passionate and you can do one project and you do another one and you set up another company and you're a bit tired but you'll get over it, whatever. But if you want to be doing what you are doing for a long time, the rest of your life, for 10 years, if you have like a, a, a big hairy goal that you want to achieve, you want to change the world, you want to set up a big company, you're in it for the long term. It's not a matter of weeks or months or one or two years. You want to be doing this 10, 20, 30 years. So then you better find a way to do it in a sustainable way. By recharging, by not running on reserve the whole time, by finding a way to balance your energy so that you can uh, keep doing this without draining your body, without draining your battery. And your body does have a battery. You know, there's a lot of physical things. You need enough sleep, you need good nutrition, but especially stress. Stress is what, you know, it puts your body in a fight or flight modus. And we are, it's great that we have that because in old days when there was a, you know, a, a Siberian tiger chasing you, it was great that we had this adrenaline, we could get away, you know, save our lives. But our body doesn't know the difference between a Siberian tiger and a deadline. Really, it doesn't. So we get this fight or flight mode, we get this adrenaline, we get the deadline and we feel great about it. And then, you know, we want the next rush. So we make the next deadline and we, so the body doesn't get a chance to go into rest and digest, which is the other uh, uh, extreme of uh, your, your bodily states. 
And of course, you know, your body is meant to have both. So we have to find a way to, to, to have both. Do you know what happens if you don't respect that? Anybody has any experience? Burnout. Burnout, yeah. Anything else? You can get sick. Yeah. Gray? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of things you don't want, you know, and we all know people and most of us have had things happen in our lives that make you stop and reconsider, not because you want to, but because there's no other way. You get sick, you get a burnout, you get an accident, something happens, something happens in your environment, you lose a loved one, you get a breakdown, whatever. And believe me, you don't want to go there. Um, and I've been there. I, uh, six years ago, uh, I was very busy um, and I knew I had to slow down, but I didn't have time to slow down. Because if you have like, you know, a lot of things to do, you don't have time to make space to reduce the work. So in fact, it creates more stress if you want to go from 100% to 90%. It creates more stress. I was trying to do that, then I got into a car accident and I had a whiplash, you know, this move that damages the nerves in your neck and head. And I couldn't think anymore. I couldn't look at a computer screen. I couldn't read anymore. And this was on day two of a retreat I was organizing. There were 15 people there waiting for me, you know, to give a workshop, to talk to them, whatever. So I thought, okay, this is really bad. I can feel this is really bad. You know what? I'll go to bed for an hour and I'll tell them I'll be a little bit later. And then after two hours in bed, I was like, no, 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 this is not going to work. You know what? I've never done this in my life. I'm going to take the day off. So I texted them, you know, can somebody else please take over, just do mastermind, talk to each other, whatever. Tomorrow I'll be back. I thought, you know, if I just have a good sleep. So the next day, you know, I, I was like, okay, hi guys, I'm here. Uh, what, were we, what were we doing? I had no, you know, brain power or whatever. So after one or two hours, everybody was looking at me and saying, please, you know, go back home, go back to bed. So I tried during that week, you know, to manage, to do things. And then I thought, if I just get through this week, you know, the retreat I'm organizing, then I'm going to have some time off and I'm going to take it easy because I knew my body was telling me, take it easy. But I kind of forgotten that after this retreat, there was a woman flying in for a private writing retreat. I was helping her to write her book. So I think after this week, I had a good sleep and I thought, okay, just these few days with this woman and then I can take it easy. Who recognizes this, by the way? <laughs> so she sits down, you know, with her laptop. She says, look what I wrote and I really love your feedback. And I'm looking at the screen. I couldn't read. Really, I couldn't find the letters. I couldn't concentrate. And I was like, okay. Uh, and I said, well, maybe you can read it to me because then, you know, I hear it in your own voice and I had some lame excuse. I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to tell her. She paid a lot of money. She flew to the Caribbean, you know, to be with me, to have this private writing week. So I, I couldn't show my weakness, you know, so I just made something up and I could help her. And so after those two weeks, I decided, okay, I really need to slow down because I can't read, can't be on the computer, whatever. And then I realized that I was trying to go before the accident from 100% to 90% and I couldn't. Everything was just as important and I couldn't decide what not to do or what to outsource. And by the way, outsourcing is also a project. It takes more time and I didn't have time. Then suddenly I was faced with 0%. I was not able to do anything. And as I got a little bit better and I could work on a computer half an hour a day, I had to pick the important things that I wanted to spend this half hour on. And if I got lost on Facebook and the half hour was gone, that was it for the day. So if you have trouble slowing down from your 100% to 90%, imagine that you can only do 10% or 5%. You had to make that decision. It's a different way of looking at it. If you have to slow down, if your body gives you the signs, then please make the right decision and just cut half of what you're doing because you know, it's gonna be solved anyway. You know, things will wait, there will be solutions, people will pick things up, but don't ignore the signs of your body. I was writing a book at that time and I write books really fast. I, I was planning to write the book in 10 days. There was a week, you know, there was only three days left. I got the accident, people already 
pre-purchased the book. I had sold 500 books and I was like, oh shit, I have to tell them it's going to be a little bit later. So I wrote an email, you know, it will be a month later. And if you want to cancel, that's okay. Nobody canceled. But then, you know, there was another month and another month. In the end, it was nine months until I could finish the book, until my brain functioned again good enough to finish the book. I thought I would lose the people who bought the book. And I kept updating them. And in fact, they say, thanks for your updates, you know, because you're telling us how you deal with the insurance. And that was part of the book about being a world citizen. You get an accident in a foreign country. Uh, you don't live anywhere. What do you do with insurance? In the meantime, the tax service, I was having discussions with them and we came to a certain conclusion. So I could put that in the book as well. So the book became better by waiting. I had never, you know, wanted the book to be nine months late, but it was like a birth, you know, the baby got better <laughs> because it was like, it got more time. So I learned that doing things more slowly is in fact sometimes even better than trying to do them really quickly. But of course I didn't really have a choice. Another effect of the accident, uh, I had a whiplash and you should use less energy. But I was constantly pushing it. Hey, I can be 45 minutes on the computer right now. Let's see if I can make an hour because I wanted to move forward. And in fact, I was living on reserve. I was always pushing the limits. I was always doing more than I could. And that resulted in a burnout. I just didn't have enough energy anymore. There were no more minerals in my body, no iron, the adrenal glands were exhausted, whatever. And also I was trying to keep a relationship with Mr. Wrong, another speech that I have, another book I wrote. I was dating the biggest playboy in the Caribbean for seven years. <laughs> It was very interesting, but I was trying to keep this relationship going by just putting a lot of energy in there. And uh, it was working, but when I didn't have the energy, I couldn't put as much energy in there. And he started feeling insecure again about our relationship and he started to, you know, exhibit his old behaviors. <laughs> so in the end, I had to stop that relationship as well, also because of the car accident, whiplash, burnout. And I became aware that I give way more energy than I take in more energy than I have. So in fact, I'm always living on reserve. So I decided I knew already I had to change something, but I thought it was in being more productive. So what do we do when you do a productivity course? You, you, know, you reduce the amount of time you need to get results. So you have more time left. And what do you do with the time you have left? <laughs> more work, right? You can do more stuff. Uh, same for time management courses. What we do is we try to be more effective so you have more time to do more work. But the idea is if you're more effective, save that time for something else. But then for what? You know, I, if you're always working, if you're a doer like I am, focused on results and not on processes, what do you do with spare time? I don't know how to do nothing. So I would watch documentaries, listen to podcasts, read books, come up with new ideas but it's still using your brain. And I think it's very important to switch from your brain to another state. But what is this other state? So I started to do some research. You have a masculine side, you have a feminine side. And the masculine side is like being, um, uh, uh, like the cognitive, um, about, uh, you know, the, how do you say, the, the rational. And the feminine side is more the emotional side, the, the surrender, receptive, um, flow state. And we all know the flow state, right? You, you can be in flow in work, but you can be in flow when you're mountain biking or dancing or whatever. So I was trying to be more balanced and use my feminine side more. But actually, I was using the tools that I knew from my masculine side, from my doing, my productive side. And that's when you get things like you put meditation into your schedule. So what do I need to do to get rid of this burnout? Okay, I go see a coach, I adapt my uh, diet, I uh, meditate every day, I go to yoga. So when is this burnout going to be finished? No, what, what else do I need to do? <laughs> I was still in the doing state. I was trying to do being to, <laughs> with the doing mentality. I don't know if you get it. I was just using the tools that created the problem to solve the problem. And I see a lot of people around me doing exactly that. And that's why I wanted to write this book and do this speech. If you recognize any of this, 
don't use the tools that you have, but find new tools. And I'm going to give you some. Uh, because that's the only way you can solve the problem and balance so you can continue doing what you're doing and what you love doing without being stopped by your body, by your mind, by whatever could, uh, could happen. So I think, you know, there, we're talking about balance and it can be yin, yang, it can be masculine, feminine. Um, I think the most clear thing is doing and being. So when you're in the doing state, you know, you have a to-do list, you're productive, you're result-oriented, you're in your masculine energy, you use your willpower, and we're all very good at that. When you're in your being state, it's being in the moment. It's being receptive to things, it's being in flow, it's not thinking, but feeling, being. I don't even know how to describe it, describe it because I still have these, you know, these doing words. Um, does anybody know how to describe being? When do you have that feeling, Amanda? Well, I always think of it as like, because I spend so much time in my head, because I'm constantly like planning, thinking, doing, and being is like, you drop out of your head into your body. Like you're just like, you're just there. Like you're present. It's like you just react. You're just like, you're just there. Like you're just here. You're not thinking about ahead of what's happening or what's happening in the past. Yeah, presence, being in the moment, grounding is also very important. When I do grounding exercises, you, you really get out of your head and in your body and you realize that you're often not even aware of your body. Can you just do a little exercise, wiggle your toes and feel the fabric of your socks or you know, the, the, the wind between your toes if you're wearing flip-flops and feel the pressure of your feet on the ground. You can close your eyes if you want. Just focus on your feet and try to wiggle each toe separately if you can. And feel your butt on the seat of your chair. Feel the heaviness, feel the pressure, feel the fabric of your trousers. Just doing this, in fact, is grounding. Who of you feels their attention dropping from their head to their body? So it can be this simple. You can do this when you're in a bus, when you're in a car, when you're waiting for an appointment, when you're talking to your team members, talking about their bees or whatever. You know, you don't have to look at another screen. You can focus on being in your body. And I think this awareness, this mindfulness, as some people call it, Maybe that's the solution to getting burned out or stress. If you can purposefully look for a few moments a day and then not scheduling in your, your agenda, you know, 30 minutes of mindfulness, but while you're walking in the street, while you're getting your coffee, while you're talking to somebody, just being mindful of your body, of your feelings, of the situation, of the moment, maybe that's the solution to avoid all these problems or um, complications that you might have and to prepare yourself for a long-term um, energy and, and passion to continue doing what you're doing. So there's a lot more words here, but I mean, the, the big difference is uh, between being and doing. And if you can find that balance for yourself, I think it can be very useful. Um, I found it, for example, in dancing tango. I learned to dance tango. And when you dance as a woman, you have to follow. And if you have to follow, you have to be aware of the subtle signs that your partner gives you. And in the beginning, of course, I was thinking, oh, I think he wants me to do this step. Okay, and then I do this step, and then I hit a chair. Uh, <laughs> but I found that your mind is slower than your body. If you get your mind out of the way and you're just in the moment, then, then you get in some kind of flow that's wonderful. And I've, I know, uh, Brent, you do um, um, mountain biking. While you're going downhill at 50 kilometers an hour, do you ever think about your to-do list? Totally empties your mind. Yeah. Who else has a, a sport or an activity that really brings you into the moment? Yeah, kickboxing. Yeah, you can't think like, oh, by the way, I have to send this email, and then you're... Punched in the face. Every time that you start thinking about the stuff, you get punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Direct feedback loops, right? Really quick, yeah. Who else? Who else? Guitar hero. Guitar, so music. I get to the, but I get to the stage where you can be conscious that how am I doing it this fast? 
And, it, and apparently F1 drivers used to use Guitar Hero to that, get in that same state. And when you're thinking, hey, how am I doing it this fast, does it still work or yeah. do you stop? On that one, it's still, you then stop, yeah, at some point after. It stops yeah, you when you think, yeah. it stops you, right? So it's also direct feedback, just like with dancing, when I start thinking, I make a mistake and then I think, oh, I made a mistake, next time I have to do it and then I miss the next step, you know, so don't think. You also had an activity? Yeah, um, I do dragon boating. And Sorry? Dragon boating. What is it? Uh, a massive big boat, 20 people in the Oh, boat. boating. Yeah, oh, wow. And you're all paddling in time. The most important thing is that everybody's in time. So you have to be really present in the boat, because if you lose concentration, you go out of time and the boat goes slower and you're letting the whole team down. Wow. Any other activities? Well, let's say playing basketball, but also ice baths. Ice baths. Yeah, you don't think about anything else but breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't, most of, the, most of the activities seem to be adrenaline based, um, but some like music and, and dancing are not. It's just something that takes you out of your mind and into this different state of being. So I would recommend to try different things and see what works for you. Uh, I've done some uh, rock climbing as well, but in climbing holes and also when you're, you know, you're hanging and looking for the next thing to grab, you're not thinking of anything else but that. And it's such a relief to give your mind a break, actually. So my few practical tips is to um, first to discover this activity that brings you into that flow, out of your mind, into your body, into the now. Sports, music, dancing, uh, ice baths, anything that's uh, accessible for you, preferably not something you have to schedule, but something you can do, you know, like 10 minutes in the evening or somewhere during the day. Drawing, art also helps. Uh, make sure that you have enough space to fully recharge. Mini holidays, uh, a weekend without any planning, turning off your phone, getting better sleep. Um, everybody knows that you shouldn't look at screens before going to sleep. Everybody knows you shouldn't do your emails first thing in the morning. Find out what works for you to give your mind this rest and to recharge as much as possible. And also stop before you're tired. Most of us stop a task when we're tired or we push a little bit more. What if you would stop before you're tired? Like the Japanese say, you eat until you're 80% full. What if we would do that with work? Then you wouldn't have need so much time to recharge. That would be a sustainable way to work for the next 20 to 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. And you would still get a lot of work done. Find your own balance. You know, we don't all have to go and do yoga and meditation, whatever, but you know what works for you. And if you're a lot in your mind, you need to get into your body as well. And if you're the other way around, but I don't think these people are here, then, you know, you should train yourself to also be rational. But I think we're all kind of the same uh, people. Also, the, uh, do you know if you're an introvert or an extrovert? I recently found out, I always thought an extrovert, as a speaker, you know, I talk and I'm very, uh, I can be social, but I like to be by myself. My natural state is to be by myself. And I found out that I'm actually an introvert because when I'm by myself, I recharge. And when I'm among people, I really like it, but I lose energy and I have to go back to be alone to recharge. And in fact, that's an introvert. An extrovert gets energy by being with people. And there's a lot of confu confusion because extroverts say, oh, but I can be alone as well for a few hours. Well, I can be among people as well for a few hours. <laughs> so if you know that you're an introvert, then don't try, when you've worked hard, don't go out with friends at night, but make sure you get your alone time to recharge. So everybody, when you get to know yourself better, you know when you're recharging and when you're uh, spending energy. Um, don't put being on your to-do list. <laughs> That's one of my big eye-openers, actually. So, um, and a very important one. Respect your body. I used to think of my body as a car. You know, I have a car. I need to put gas in, I need to maintain it once a year. Uh, of course, I don't like bumps in the uh, dents in the car. I take care of it, but it's a machine that I use. And now I think of my body, look what it did for me. You know, it got me here like 49 years. It helped me achieve all these uh, wonderful results and all these experiences. 
and I have to take care of it because it's me, you know, if I respect my body, it will, um, it will help me. And there's a beautiful saying, let me see if I can remember, if you don't listen to the whispers of your body, you're going to have to hear it scream. <laughs> your body gives you signs. And if you listen to the signs, it will be your best friend. If you ignore them, your body's going to make sure you hear it. And those signs and those screams are not what we want, believe me. Um, and practice mindfulness, but then, like I said, try to have little one minute check ins during the day. Um, one of my coaches, I'm getting coaches now in this, you know, this spiritual emotional realm. So no business coaches, but people who help me to be aware of my body and my energy. And one of them said, during the day, like when you're sitting here, when you're getting coffee, put a hand on your body, just any part of your body, just for a minute and concentrate and try to feel that part from inside and from your hand. And it brings your energy there and you can really feel your energy going there. And it's 10 seconds or 30 seconds. Everybody can spare, you know, five times 10 seconds. But if you do that during the day, and if you want, you can even set phone reminders, you know, if you want to have a technological way of doing this. But just to check in with your body, to check in with yourself. How am I feeling? Am I grabbing this cup of coffee because I feel tired? Why don't I just accept that I'm tired and see if I can fit in a 20 minute nap or you know, just a little break in my day instead of pushing your body to go and go and go. So just being aware, I think, is the biggest tool that we all have that you can use anytime, anywhere. And it will make you go further because, of course, we all, you know, want to keep on doing what we're doing. And I hope with these little tips, you know, um, we'll be able to. If you're interested, I'm this, this book, I decided I'm not going to write it on a deadline because, of course, the topic is not... <laughs> So, to be honest, I've been talking about this book for one and a half years already, <laughs> instead of writing it in 10 days. But what I noticed, it's getting better. Because every time there's a new insight, there's a new layer I'm peeling off, uh, that I think if I had finished it a year ago, it wouldn't have been the same book. So, uh, sometimes things take time to get better. So, I, actually, I plan to finish it this year. Um, if you're interested, my website is there and there's lots of other books and things. If you um, have a question or something, you think, oh, you should mention this in the book or I have a really good meditation or book or insight, please come and see me because I want it to be as complete as possible because I think a lot of people will uh, need this message in order to continue doing what they're doing without a burnout or an accident or you know any bad experience. So uh, please take just one second to thank your body for what it's doing for you. Thank you very much. Alright guys, we've got a few extra questions. So. It's not a question, but like you said about the whispering of the body. Once I heard that it's like the universe comes with a feather one day. And if you don't feel it, it will come the next day. It's like, okay, a pillow in your face. And if you don't hear it, it's coming with a truck. So. <laughs> I waited for the truck, so don't, don't do that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thanks. That's a good example. Thank you. Yeah, how do you get over the guilt of relaxing? The guilt of relaxing? Well, if you realize it's not that you're not working, but the relaxing enables you to keep doing what you're doing for the next 30 years. And it's really part of also inspiration, clearing your mind. You'll be much clearer. You'll be able to concentrate better. Your body will be restored. You'll get new insights. So in fact, it's part of your work. Have, have you found anything around dealing with the other people's accusations around not working? I wrote a thread up in the DC a while ago for saying I work four hours a day. <laughs> and I was known that people say, oh, you're that guy who doesn't work much. You know, you know, <laughs> ingrained in our culture and in our own minds that you um, you have to look busy and be busy in order to deserve the rewards but if your four hours are very productive and very organized and very uh, effective 
then you get the same amount of work done than somebody who's sitting behind the computer 11 hours a day every day. Uh, but you take your rest and you find your balance. So in fact, you're, you're a perfect example then of having found your balance in order to be productive, to restore, to get inspiration, to relax, to enjoy. Um, and I, I was in, um, in uh, Bali, in Ubud, there's this co-working space, the most famous one. I don't know the name anymore. You have a view of the, the rice fields. And oh, Hubert, Hubert, right. And uh, I was surprised all these young digital nomads, you know, just quit their job, setting up the company. They're just in an office, you know, it doesn't even have air conditioning, looking at the rice fields and just typing away, you know, day after day, not taking weekends, not taking evenings off. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You can do it for a deadline, you can do it for an emergency. That should not be your life, really. <laughs> Amanda. Now, you yeah. To do it now and those fun it. things sometimes or often they also give you insights that help your work. You meet people that can help you, you get insights or inspiration that make your social media better or um, you know you, you grow your personality. It's, it's not you're on and you're off, it's different kind of experiences and I think you need both experiences. try and challenge something about this a little bit, which is uh, this, the, the, your approach to this, I, I find it to be quite um, dualist, that it's like on, off, feel, you know, gap, you're hitting pedal to the metal and then now I have to take a break. And, you know, doing and then being. And uh, it seems to me like a lot of the way that this is being approached by, by all of us is, is it, it, yeah, it has, it has this, this on or off approach to it. What is it about the work that means that it's draining? Mm -hmm. That you have to stop doing it, and, and that you have to make sure that that time is productive and efficient. Is it what? What is it about the tension, in my own experience, of that and the way that you're coming at it that it needs a rest? So a lot of those tactics that you're suggesting are around trying to find ways to take care, create some relief from that. But isn't that part of the issue? And, and you know, that's that when you talk about masculine, feminine, yin and yang, this, this dualism, the thing about yin and yang is they are part of a non-dualist philosophy, that they, 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 they go together, they're close supportive, that it's part of one whole. So I think there's some truth in and some, some answers in trying to find a middle way, which, which is, where there is no work, rest, work hard, play hard, it's all one and the same thing. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant remark, and I think the reason why I'm still talking about these dualistic, the, the two extremes, is because I'm still in this process, you know, I'm just going through it and I'm uh, just sharing my findings with you, but I think eventually the, the goal would be to find this balance in yourself. So you get to know the two extremes, I know this one extreme very well, and I think all of us do, um, and in order to find the balance, first you have to get to know the other extreme, feel what it brings you, what it can do, and then find like this balance in the middle that while you're working, you're also mindful and you're feeling and you're getting all these impressions that you can make your work better and more pleasant and enjoyable and you don't lose your energy and you interact with other people. And then you go to another activity which is less work related but it also fulfills you and you can use the same skills and I think it will be a more fluid thing. But for now, you know, the only thing I can deal with is okay, there's these extremes and the truth is somewhere so in the middle. Yeah, especially, especially. It doesn't have to be 
take the time to do that, yeah. but actually see if you can do both those things at the same time. I think integration is the, the goal that we're all looking for, that it becomes natural and that you know, it's, it's a flow state constantly. Um, with respect to your body in a sustainable way, I think that's the, the ultimate goal. Great. Um, just a question regarding like, taking time off. Sometimes I'll be working and I'll get some momentum and I don't want to take Sunday off because I made so much progress on Saturday. I want to keep pushing and ride this momentum and not bother with sort of like taking a break. I mean, what would you say about that? Take Monday off. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know this flow state, when you're getting things done, if you take a day off then, then you feel frustrated, and then you have to get started again the next day. But uh, just uh, realize, like with the, gar the car and the gas, you know, you, you have to get gas, you know, you have to recharge your battery sometimes, and there's a little flexibility there. But then don't think, I've worked on Saturday and Sunday, but Monday is a normal working day, so now I have to wait until next weekend. And it's nice if you can follow your natural flow. Now I feel like working, now I feel like concentrating, now I feel like calling people, now I feel like brainstorming. If we all follow more that natural flow, then I think you can also get more things done. One thing I do, and maybe not the best example, but to help me to let go, I make very careful notes of what I have to do when I pick up again. Mm -hmm. And it helps me switch off for a while, but I know that when I go back into it, I've written very carefully, often in point format, what I have to start doing to get me back into the flow, yeah. and that helps me to let go a little bit. Thanks. Yeah, also that your mind is not, oh, no, but you write it no, down, I mean, I and then you pick it up. I switch off, it's like when I go back in, these are, and I literally put point one, point two, point three, yeah. just so I know it's there when I get back in. It's also ritual, switching off ritual, and then it's a restarting. Ritual. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It helps me let go. Thank you. So, two absolute key things that really helped me personally, like when, when I, I was struggling a little bit when I first got into management because I'm very perfectionist by nature and you know I wanted to do everything myself but when you suddenly have a team of 20, 30 people and you still want to do it all yourself, that sucks. Uh, but for me what really made the difference was really learning priority management for what I had to do and like really, like I, I plan in basically three, three slots every day between an hour and 90 minutes where I do the most important work, but that's often not the work that gives me uh, kind of like introvert, extrovert, it doesn't give me energy to it, right? Like a lot of time because I feel deadlines and what I have to do. But I then spend, I, I then feel free in the rest of the time I work to do things I enjoy. And it's, it might sound very odd to most people, but like, I, I don't really make a lot of money with SEO, but I love playing around with it and I love doing it. And it's something that actually get, I feel like I get energy when I do it, right? So it's something that I, I do as a hobby, if you will, right? Yeah. Uh, and similar to my coaching, like I love doing my coaching and I feel so refreshed afterwards. But I, I found really the ability to break down the key priorities and really schedule the time for that and then keeping the rest of the time off really helps me keep a great balance. And I've never, like despite working eight plus hours sometimes, like I've never had any kind of burnout or felt it at least, right? Um, yeah, you're aware of the things you like and the things that have to be done, but you don't really get a lot of energy from. So if you're aware of those tasks, you know, like in the morning, you know, some people start with the things they don't like to get it over with. Some people start with creative work to, you know, at least have that done. So everybody needs to find their own uh, way of, of um, uh, structuring their day. But the most important thing is to be aware of, um, you know, I like this, it gives me energy. How can I do things different? So thanks for sharing. And also, uh, I think also being aware, like, particularly things like coffee, I, I don't drink coffee at all, but, but even things like sugar and stuff, like actually making an effort not to use it. Because I think if you if you start using that crutch, like I, I know a lot of people from supplements and all that sort of stuff, and, and all great to play around with, I'm sure, but, but like if, if you need that crutch to be able to do what you want to do, then that's probably the problem. Well, I, I um, uh, became aware that when I have a craving for coffee or sugar, it's a sign of my body. 
So then I look, uh, do I have to continue, you know, then sometimes a, a cookie or a coffee helps, or can I schedule a little break because apparently I'm tired. So just being aware of it is already a difference between, you know, grabbing it to, to keep going. So. Well, my body's telling me I'm starving. I'm yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have to call it a day. Thanks so much, Esther. Thank you.